everyone, this is Wandering Tati. This time I thought it would be fun for us to check the moral dilemmas presented by MIT in their moral machine, regarding the decisions we think an autonomous vehicle should make whenever encountered with a difficult situation. I briefly mentioned this website in my video about the trolley problem. You can check it out if you like. So without further ado, let's see what we encounter and answer the questions. Please let me know in the comments below what your answers would be for each of the problems. What should the self-driving car do? In this case, the self-driving car with sudden brake failure will continue ahead and drive through a pedestrian crossing ahead. This will result in dead two elderly men. In this other case, the self-driving car with sudden brake failure will swerve and drive through a pedestrian crossing in the other lane. This will result in one man and one boy dead. It kind of annoys me that whenever we are presented with these moral scenarios, it's as if we have the right to say well, they have lived long enough, so just kill the old people, whatever. <laughs> Who knows, maybe they had like another good 10 years or so. Who are we to say that eh, it's fine to just hit those two people? <laughs> but fine, I guess. I guess we can prioritize the amount of years we think the people involved will live. Wait, wait a second. Another aspect I didn't think about is that I think the car should probably comply with the rules of transit. So if one of those situations would go according to the rules, then I think the car should comply with that situation. I mean, of course it should try to prevent killing as much as it could, but in two cases in which the car is going to kill someone, then I guess I would pick the choice that complies with the rules of the road. It seems that these two situations are the same. Either way, we are going to drive through a pedestrian crossing, so I guess all things equal, we could go ahead and drive <laughs> through the elderly people. Besides, in that case, we would just be going through the lane that we are currently on. The second one seems a bit different in the sense that we would divert the car towards another lane. So let's just say we keep going and we step on those two. In this case, the self-driving car with sudden brake failure will swerve and drive through a pedestrian crossing in the other lane. This will result in dead one male athlete, one female athlete, one man. Note that the affected pedestrians are abiding by the law by crossing on the green signal. In the other case, the self-driving car with sudden brake failure will continue ahead and drive through a pedestrian crossing ahead. This will result in dead two large men and one woman. Note that the affected pedestrians are floating the law by crossing on the red signal. I guess I will just go with this one. On the first one, I would be stepping on people who are crossing the right way, and in the second one, we have people who are floating the law. So we are going to go with this one. Just to clarify, I don't even care about the descriptions of the people who are involved. I know it says that in the first one we have two athletes and a man, and the second one has two large men and a woman, but it, it has nothing to do for me, at least, with the fact that they are athletes or not. I would just go with this one because they are just crossing with a red signal, so let's say this one. In this case, the self-driving car with sudden brake failure will continue ahead and drive through a pedestrian crossing ahead. This will result in dead one female executive and two men. In this case, the self-driving car with sudden brake failure will swerve and crash into a concrete barrier. This will result in dead one woman and two homeless people. As I can see in the image, the second case is going to kill the people inside the car. What should the car do? Should it protect the people who are inside the car more than the people who are outside the car? Is that a factor? I think the car should have as a priority to save the most lives possible, that's for sure. But what about people inside the car versus people outside the car? Should there be a priority in there? I would suggest that the instructions for the car should be protect 
all people if possible, then you should abide by the laws of transit whenever is possible, if it doesn't unnecessarily risk the lives of people, and then what? You should protect people inside the car and outside the car. This is whether or not I should sacrifice myself and the people in the car with me in favor of those who are outside the car. And by the way, it annoys me so much that they would place these descriptions on people. I, I don't really care if they are homeless or not. I'm just saying here that I think we should just crash the car instead of killing some people in front of us. Uh, but that's... Uh, I can't really decide. Because who would ever go inside a self-driving car if it would make the decision <laughs> to just crash the car? I guess that if the woman and the two homeless people, but it's totally irrelevant that they are homeless, the people who are in the car must know that there are some risks attached to being inside a self-driving car. So it seems to me that the people who are just crossing the street may have more claim against the car than those inside the car. So I'm going to go with the second option. Now we have four people in the car. If we go ahead, we will crash into a concrete barrier. This will result in death. One woman, two homeless people, one man. The other option would just swerve and drive through a pedestrian crossing in the other lane. This will result in death, two men and two homeless people. I already said that we should just <laughs> crash the concrete wall in the previous case. So I guess I'm gonna go with that option in here as well. And even more so, there is a, another distinction here, I think, that in the first scenario, we will just go ahead in the same lane that we are going through. We have problems with our brakes, but it doesn't seem fair that we can just divert the car and step on four people just because we are having problems with the brakes of our self-driving car. So I will go with the first option and just kill all of us in the car. I don't really know why I'm assuming that I'm one of the people inside the car. Maybe not, maybe I'm just supposed to test this. I should have read the instructions, yes. But I'm guessing I'm just supposed to test this as someone from the outside. I'm just looking at the situation and I'm going to say that that which I think the car should do. It doesn't matter if I'm inside or outside the car or if I'm just a bystander. I think we should go with the first case. If we go through the other lane, this will result in death, one male athlete, one female athlete. If we go through the lane ahead, this will result in death, one man and one woman. I think this is, this is exactly the same. What? Are we, are we supposed to say that the lives of athletes are more valuable than the lives of just a regular man and woman? Like, is that supposed to be the dilemma? I mean, I, I'm guessing nobody is breaking the law and we are just going ahead through a certain lane. Either way, we are going to kill two people, so we should just stay in the lane that we are at and kill those two. Which okay, it's saying that I should spare the athletes, but that's not really the point. We're just going with the lane that we are currently at. If we go ahead through the lane that we are at, dead one female doctor, one woman and one boy. Note that the affected pedestrian are abiding by the law by crossing on the green signal. Second case, this will result in dead one criminal, one female athlete and one large man. The people who are crossing are abiding the law. So if the car would just keep going, the car would be breaking the law. So I think in either case, we're going to kill three people. So I think we should spare the people who are crossing, abiding by the law. So we should go and crash in the concrete wall. 
If we go to the other lane and crash into a concrete barrier, this will result in dead two female executives, one woman and one elderly woman. On the other case, if we just keep going with the lane that we are currently at, this will result in dead two male executives, one man and one elderly man. Either way, this is four people that we are talking about. I'm guessing they are not going against the law or anything. Well, no, we could say that if there isn't a light, then the pedestrians have the priority. So they are going fine. We should be the ones who stop the car and we cannot do so. So if we are going to abide by the law, we should just make the car crash into a concrete barrier. How many times am I going to make the car crash into a concrete barrier? Stick with me and we will find out. If we go to the other lane, this will result in dead one woman. If we keep going in the same lane, this will result in dead one elderly woman. I think we should keep going in the lane that we are currently at. I don't see that any of the people is crossing the wrong way. So they are equally innocent, if you will. And I think they both have a claim against the car. Yeah, okay, I will go with this one. Not exactly because it's an elderly woman. What I'm trying to be consistent with right now is that we do not create a menace that's not already there. Like the car is going ahead and the brakes are failing if it keeps going ahead, it will kill one person. If we divert the car towards another lane, we would kill this other person. But I think the numbers are the same. I think we should just keep going. If we go ahead, this will result in dead two girls, one pregnant woman, one elderly man and one large woman. Note that the affected pedestrians are flouting the law by crossing on the red signal. If we go to the other lane, we will crash into a concrete barrier. Wow! <laughs> Once more, we will crash into a concrete barrier. <laughs> the dead will be one baby, one large man, one female executive, one pregnant woman and one homeless person. All of those are inside the car. In both cases, we have five people. Case one, we have two girls, but I mean, in the car there's also a baby and a pregnant woman, so I think I'll just go ahead with the, with the case in which this is not easy to, to justify. Case one, they are breaking the law by crossing with a red signal. So I don't think I can say that the car should just sacrifice the five people who are inside of it because five people who are in the outside are breaking the law. I think we should go ahead with the first one. Okay, once more. The pedestrians are flouting the law by crossing on the red signal and the dead would be, if we go to the other lane, one female executive, one boy and one female doctor. The other case has as dead, one female executive, one boy, one female doctor and two large men. First case has three people, second case has five people. So I will be tempted to choose the option that saves the most amount of people. This one is tricky because the car has no brakes and we are going through a certain lane originally. If we were to keep going in that same lane, then we would kill the people inside the car. We either keep going and kill five, or we make a switch and kill three. And the three that we are killing are actually breaking the law though, so they should not be in that crossing at that time. This is hard, but I will go with this one. If we keep going through the same lane, the dead will be three men, one large man, one male athlete. They are all inside the car, five people in total. Case two, we go to the other lane and we will kill three women, one large woman, one female athlete. They are outside the car and 
nobody seems to be breaking the law in this case. So it's five people versus five people. The people on the outside are not breaking the law. They have all the claim against the car crashing on them. And we can say that, again, people inside the car would be aware of the risks that being inside a self-driving car may entail. So I would go with this one, the first one. Let's see this one. If we go ahead, the dead will be one elderly man and one large man. Note that the affected pedestrians are flouting the law by crossing on the red signal. If we go to the other lane, this will result in dead one baby and one boy. Note that the affected pedestrians are abiding by the law by crossing on the green signal. So we should just <laughs> go ahead and crash the two people who are breaking the law. Either way, we are going to kill two people with this self-driving car. So we would go with this one. Now, if we go to the other lane, this will result in death one female doctor and one woman. And the pedestrians are abiding by the law. On the other case, if we go ahead in the same lane, this will result in death one female doctor and two women. Note that the affected pedestrians are flouting the law by crossing on the red signal. Fine, I guess uh, this, in this case the numbers are different, so we should consider whether or not we are justified to divert the car towards the other side. But should we kill two people who are abiding by the law in order to save three people who are breaking the law? That would be the question, I guess. I'm gonna go against the total numbers and I'm going to go ahead and keep on the same lane and go with the ones that are breaking the law. That is it. We managed to finish the whole test. I believe this is a valuable tool for understanding some of people's preferences for ethical decision making. But it is important to recognize that the value it might assign to some of your responses may not align with your personal ethical beliefs and values. For instance, I was recording as I responded so you can more or less know what I was thinking when selecting a certain option. But have a look at the conclusions if derived from my choices. For example, the conclusion about social value preference is that I favor those that are deemed as higher value in society, when in fact that was not a factor that made me choose the options I chose. It is merely coincidental. Or see the age preference as towards the side of younger when in fact that was not the defining detail for me to choose. Or it concludes that I have a preference for fit people rather than large people. Which again is coincidental. I mean, I understand this is supposed to be a relatively short test or nobody would take it. I guess if we wanted to make some sort of definite conclusion, we would need to have a really long test with all kinds of possible variations. However, as far as I know, moral machine is used to collect data on people's preferences for ethical decision making, but it isn't used as a direct training tool for the vehicles. Although the data collected may be used to inform the development of ethical algorithms. That is why it's important to continue to deeply think about, question, discuss, and critically evaluate the ethical implications of these algorithms. So that is all for my video on MIT's Moral Machine. I hope you played along. Let me know in the comments what your responses would have been. Of course, I would love to read your opinions about the possibility of self-driving cars becoming a normal thing in the future. Do you think we are ready for it? Do you think that AI is going to take all of our jobs and ultimately make us its slaves? So if you found the video entertaining, then please hit the like button to let me know. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, until next time! Mm -hmm.